Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey, welcome aboard again for Growing in Grace, the podcast. Mike Kapler with Joel Brzezinski. I'm the Cap. He's the Breeze Man. And we get together every week right here to focus on the good news, grace of the gospel. Now, if you're new to the podcast, maybe somebody shared it with you. You stumbled across it by doing a, a Google search or something about grace. I just want to let you know ahead of time, you can you can put your guard down. You can relax. You can rest. We're not going to try and give you a long list of things that you need to be doing as a Christian. In the Spirit of God working in and through you is going to be able to take care of everything that's needed for you in your life in Christ and the things that go on in your everyday life. Mm. Uh, so we're not here to, to hammer any of that stuff on you. What we are here to tell you about is what God did on our behalf through Jesus Christ. He did for us what we could not do for ourselves. We rest in that, and that's a little bit about what our podcast is. We're in the middle of a series right now called Summarizing the Scripture, and we're trying to just take this big book that everybody knows as the Bible and uh, shrink it down a little bit so you can look at one picture, even though we're doing this over many weeks, we're trying to help you connect some dots here in this forest of Bible verses so that you can begin to see the picture of, of what the Bible, uh, what the written scriptures that the Word of God is really meant to be for us. So I bring to you Mr. Brzezicki. Oh, hi. Um, what's going on, people? <laughs> Did I put you to sleep there? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Let me just uh, <clears throat> yawn here. Okay. No, <laughs> really. Just just kidding. I think we are on to some really fun thing. I, I, I like talking about all this stuff, everything that we've been talking about with, um, you know, summarizing the scripture, looking at Adam. Uh, we, we looked at Abraham last week. We're going to continue to look at him this week. And we'll be talking about in the coming weeks about the law, about Moses, about the Psalms and the prophets, about Jesus and his old covenant teachings, Jesus and his new covenant ministry, and that might be foreign to some of you, that those ideas, but it's we've talked about it many times on the podcast, but we're setting up the big picture of the Bible and summarizing it with uh, key points uh, that we see. And Abraham, of course, is one of those big things. Abraham's faith. Well, last week we had talked about the promise that God had made to Abraham, that he would make him the father of many nations. He would be very, very fruitful. And Abraham was like, well, I've got Sarah, my wife, but she can't have kids, so how's this going to happen? And really, what it boiled down to was God made a promise, and he was going to do it. And Abraham believed God, and uh, God counted that to him as righteousness. Well, time had gone on, and this promise wasn't happening. I mean, it was it was really 25 years later that the promise actually came true. But in the meantime, just a few years before that, Abraham said, all right, this isn't happening. Maybe there's something that I should do. And he went to uh, or Sarah, I think, actually came to him and said, here, take my handmaiden, take my bondservant, Hagar, and have a child with her. And so, like you were saying, whether it was whether Abraham was struggling with what was going on or whether he thought, well, maybe I'm supposed to do this myself or, or whatever, for whatever reason, Abraham went in with Hagar, and they had Ishmael. Ishmael, as it's talked about in Galatians 3 and 4, Ishmael represents a child of the flesh, not the child of promise. Ishmael was not the child that God had promised. Now, something that's interesting to me, and I don't know what you think about this, Cap, but something that's interesting to me is that even though Abraham had done this, Here's what God said. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him, and I will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall beget 12 princes, and I will make him a great nation. Uh, that's something that's often not brought out of this story, and it's it's not really part of the big picture as far as the gospel goes. And the reason for that is because in the very next verse, and I'm reading from Genesis 17, 19, and 20, in verse 21 of Genesis 17, but my covenant I will establish with Isaac, 
whom Sarah shall bear to you at this set time next year. And so the covenant, the promise, was all going to come through Isaac, not through Ishmael. But nevertheless, God blessed Ishmael and made him a great nation. That's God speaking, not me. And I think that's interesting. And um, it also says that uh, Abraham didn't waver in faith and that he... um, And it says that Abraham, not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about 100 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform, and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. I I find that interesting, because I had never really thought about that, how Abraham, even though he went and did this thing, all the while, he still trusted God. He still believed that God was going to do something. But yet, I think he kind of, whether we call it a mistake, he kind of said, oh, okay, I'm going to try to do this myself. And I think many of us, many of us are, are familiar with that. You, you're unsure what to do. You're unsure about what God has said or which way he wants you to go. And so you kind of try to make it happen. Uh, and, you know, consequences come from that. But yet, all the while, that doesn't mean that you don't have faith. Um, and I'm just kind of going off the, the path here, but something that you and I had talked about before recording here, uh, I just find it interesting that God still blessed what Abraham had done. But the main thing is that the covenant was going to be through the child of promise and not through the, the child of the flesh. There, I've said a mouthful. Go ahead. <laughs> I know we could probably spend a podcast or two just trying to figure out, scratch our heads and figure out uh, just how Abraham went from, uh, you know, this this place of, of faith with trusting God to bring a child through his, his wife, Sarah, and then ended up with Hagar having a child with her, still not wavering in faith, uh, the child still being blessed, Abraham seemingly not being punished for it. There, so there, there seems to be an element of, of grace involved here. But, you know, the, there are times, you know, let's face it, we, we all end up to some degree in one way, shape or form. We all end up trying to do it on our own instead of trusting completely in God. And I, I think God still works through all of that, e- even if you want to consider sometimes sins taking place, mistakes taking place, wrong decisions taking place, our own effort getting in the way. God still works through it. It doesn't necessarily, as you said, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're wavering in faith. You know, sometimes we're that we're we're human, and and we we have limitations sometimes, and and God still works through us in that. You know, as Paul gets ready to talk about Abraham and try to explain to the Galatians who were reading his letter, try to explain to them using Abraham as as an example, and 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 the law, and and the two children, and the two women. Uh, who represent the two covenants that we talked about a little bit last week at the end of Galatians chapter 4. As as Paul's getting ready to lead into all of that, toward the end of the second chapter of Galatians, he said, through the law, and we know that Abraham came before the law. We've talked about that. We'll talk about it some more because we're going to be talking more about the law and Moses in the weeks ahead. But through the law, I died to the law so that I might live to God. Now, why, I mean, th- th- there's a there's a power packed <laughs> verse right there, Galatians two nineteen. Through the law, I died to the law so that I might live to God. And then he he goes on to say, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live; Christ lives in me. Uh, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who gave Himself up for me. I don't nullify the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain or died needlessly. Now, we get into Galatians chapter 3. And, uh, well, I know we're going to be getting into Moses and the law, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. But we're going to try and finish up with, with Abraham here and, and, and move on to the next significant part of, of the Scripture here in our, in our summary of the Bible. But he says this. He says, you foolish Galatians, because here are some people who had begun to trust solely in Christ and in him alone. And some others came along and tried to say, okay, that's good. You've got Jesus, but you also still need certain portions or aspects of the law. And Paul is jumping down their throat just a little bit in a loving sort of way and mm-hmm. says, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed and crucified? This is the only thing I want to find out from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or was it by hearing with faith. Are you so foolish 
having begun by the Spirit, are, are you now being perfected by the flesh? And this is the point I wanted to try to make here, what we just read. Are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit or in the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? What's he talking about when he says the flesh? It might surprise you. He's not talking about, in this case, he's not talking about fleshly sin. He's not talking about what, whatever, stealing, adultery, I mean, murder. When people think of the flesh, they think of bad things. Here, he, he's talking about the law and the commandments. Are you being perfected, having begun in the Spirit? Are you now being perfected by the flesh of the law? That's the way I see it anyway, Joel, and I'll let you jump in here. But And, and then he, he goes on to start giving the example of, of Abraham, the works of the law, and how it contrasts with faith that came through Abraham and that we now have in Christ. Yeah, I think it's a great contrast he makes there, really, between the promise that God made, God saying, I'm going to do this, and I don't need your help, and Abraham and, and these Galatians saying, well, I think you need our help, God. <laughs> we began in the Spirit, sure, but uh, I think you need our help to finish this out. And God says, no, I don't need your help at all. Kind of reminds me of a story when I was getting some physical therapy a few years ago. The physical therapist, she told me to rest my leg. I was lying down. She said, rest my leg on her shoulder. And using her own strength, she was going to push my leg up because she was trying to stretch certain muscles that I was dealing with, that I had problems with. Well, I lifted my leg up onto her shoulder, but I didn't really rest it there because as she pushed, I began to lift my leg with my own strength. And she looked at me and she, <laughs> and she said, just rest your leg on my shoulder. She said, you're a helper, aren't you? And, and, and it's kind of like, I'm not supposed to be a helper. I'm not supposed to do this. She is supposed to be the one that is stretching my leg muscles. And this is, it's the same way. My job was to rest. Her job was to do the physical therapy, was at least to do that part of it. And in the same way, I think Abraham had thought, well, I think God needs some help. So I'm going to, I'm going to go to Hagar and we're going to have Ishmael. And God says, that's not the way that this is going to happen. And so Isaac is going to be the one. Isaac is going to be the one that this covenant comes through. And so even though Abraham had tried to help, so to speak, in my own words, God still did what he was going to do. It was going to be the child of promise, not the work of Abraham's flesh, not his own fleshly efforts, but it was going to be God who did it. And indeed, the law came 430 years after all of this. And so... Galatians 3.17 says, And this I say, that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ, in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. That promise, that covenant, is the new covenant. And the new covenant cannot be annulled by the law. In other words, the new covenant supersedes the old covenant and does away with it. And so... We'll leave it at that for right now, and we'll continue on with our series of summarizing the scriptures next week right here on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.